Hey, this is Harrison with Freedom Campers, and today I'm going to be talking about two different power setups. Electrical systems that you can use to power your Freedom Camper. These are systems that we've been running for the last two years, and we wanted to make a video talking about that. We don't have any relationship to any of the products mentioned in the video. Just wanted to share some of the stuff that's worked for us. If you have a setup that you really like, drop a comment below and let us know what you're running. So the first option for the Freedom Campers in terms of power is just running a all-in-one power supply. These ones are great. This is the Anchor Solix C1000, the first gen. They have a second gen that just came out and I have run this power supply for probably a little over a year. And I use it to power my fridge. I use it to power the vent fan on the side of my camper. This is like my go-to, uh, you know, to charge my phone, my cameras, everything I need. It's all in the Anchor Solix. I charge it with 200 watt panels, so I have 200 watts of possible solar power that I'll get out of this, and that typically translates to about 150 watts when I'm in full sun. This is what works for me. Now, what I really wanted to get into is there's a lot of options for how to run your electrical or your power setup, and really what I've found is that it all depends on how you want to have your Freedom Camper set up so a lot of people like to just keep their camper in the bed of their truck all the time right you're never going to take it out or maybe you're mounting it to a utility trailer you're never going to take the camper off that trailer it's your dedicated teardrop that's what you're using it for i think these make a lot less sense in those scenarios so for me personally i like being able to take my freedom camper out of the bed and What's really important in order to do that is it has to be light enough that you can lift it out. I don't have a forklift or anything at home. And so I need to be able to take everything out of my setup, put it on the ground so my wife and I can lift the Freedom Camper out of the bed of my truck. And I like the modularity of this. I still use my truck bed sometimes. I love having the deck system in there, but if I wanna stack brush in there, firewood, you know, tools, pallets of stone, stuff like that, I don't want the camper in, I'm gonna take it out. And so if I were to do a battery powered setup, which you'll see next in the more permanent trailer setup we have, you can get a lot more battery power and storage for less money than a power supply like this, but you're not gonna take apart your entire DC battery setup every time you take this out. You could probably make something a little bit more modular, but that's the main thing you need to think about is first, is your Freedom Camper gonna stay in whatever vehicle or whatever platform you're putting on? And second, how much power are you gonna need? What are you gonna run, right? The trailer that's next to me here has a 7,000 BTU DC air conditioner, right? I'm not running an air conditioner thing. There is no way you could run an air conditioner off of a power supply. So that's where, you know, what we've found is for like smaller portable setups, where you need to be really mobile and you don't want a lot of weight, running the power supply is a great option, but you do pay for that convenience. Now to set up the Anchor Solix, what I did was drilled holes in the roof, added a little Lexel sealant, ran down the solar cables, and I actually plugged my solar panels directly into um, the Anchor and it'll charge through that. It has an inverter inside, so it can do AC. The main downside of this though that I found with the power supplies, the DC works great, but the inverter is very inefficient. And so, you know, whether it's summertime or wintertime, if you, as soon as you turn the inverter on, you're gonna lose a lot of power. And I think that's the, I mean, that's the main downside with these. If you're running a lot of stuff AC, you're just not going to get the efficiency you do with a DC system. So you're both gonna lose power um, and you're gonna chew through a lot more of your storage. Okay, so now on the flip side, I was talking about the DC system. We have this particular one, which is a 300 amp hour battery, and then a solar charge converter and 400 watts of solar. So it is kind of the polar opposite setup of what I have on my truck. This will run the 7,000 BTU air conditioner completely off grid. You don't have to charge this. It does have a charge port on the front in case you wanted to plug into shore power. Um, but this setup was built to be permanent, right? All the toolboxes on the trailer are bolted down. The Freedom Camper is through bolted to the decking of the trailer. You know, this isn't something you're gonna take on and off the trailer easily, right? And you do get the benefit though, because you're running a DC setup and it's more permanent, 
you can mount more solar panels. You know, there's no way you're gonna be able to lift by yourself something with 400 watts of solar, an awning, uh, an air conditioning unit. You know, it's just not gonna come on and off super easy, but it's not meant to, right? And so we have a lot of customers that when they get their Freedom Camper, they'll go out and they'll buy a dedicated trailer for the Freedom Camper, and that is the setup. And if you're doing one of those builds, it's gonna be kind of a permanent teardrop setup. I would say going with a full on, you know, DC system and then maybe just getting a single inverter, you know, if you want to have a plug, you know, AC to charge your phone or something, but focus on keeping the system DC so you can have, you know, more power to run stuff like an air conditioner or a fan or, you know, I mean, fill in the blank, right? I think it's just, it, it's a lot more efficient. You can get a lot more power for less money and it just, you know, it'll, it'll last a long time and you'll have it just in the camper ready to go with you. Okay, so at the end of the day, this video is just to give you some ideas as you look at a Freedom Camper or look at building one out. Again, it's pretty open to whatever application you have, uh, whatever system you wanna use. These are the two though that we have tried. Again, we don't have any sort of financial relationship with the company that makes EcoWorthy, the batteries, or Noco Genius, or Anchor, or Jackery. Like, we don't, any of those will work fine, whatever brands you wanna use and are comfortable with. The main thing here that we wanted to get across was just showing some of the options that we here at Freedom Campers run. You're welcome to try other setups. I think just think about your application. What are you trying to power in your Freedom Camper? And then, is your Freedom Camper going to be a permanent platform? Are you leaving it in whatever vehicle you're carrying it in full time? Or do you wanna make sure to keep it lightweight and modular so you can take it in and out of the camper? Those are the two main things to consider. These are what we're running. I'm sure there's a whole host of other ways to do it. If you have a way you've rigged out your Freedom Camper, be sure to post your photos or videos in the Facebook group and leave a comment below. Thank you for watching.